Hello, thanks for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arundel. I'm down by the River Severn here in Shrewsbury in England, and as you can see, I've got a couple of friends with me here, uh, some lovely swans. Today I'm going to be talking about J.K. Rowling's uh, astrological situation. It's obviously uh, been a big name for a long time through the Harry Potter series, but there's a bit of controversy around her situation at the moment, to say the least. So what is her natal chart saying? I'm going to go back to Astral Towers to share this with you. It's going to be a quite quick, about 15 minutes. Look at what gave her the inspiration to write. She's obviously worked very, very hard. How her progressions have gone on over the years and how a directed chart which is moving her natal chart round for the year she's been on the planet, which will be 55 years this 31st of July, is impacting on this current, rather charged environment that seems to be swirling around her. As you can see, I'm in my nautical look today um, as the seven sorcerer, but please stay with me. I think you'll be rather intrigued what we discover. Thank you. Hello, welcome back to Astral Towers HQ. So here's the deal going to do about a 15 minute special on JK Rowling to try to understand from an astrological viewpoint what's going on in her situation now but I'm briefly going to look at her nat natal birth chart to see where she mined the success her progress chart how events have unfolded over time and also her directions which takes her nativity turns it around 55 degrees for the year she's been on the planet on the 31st of July and see how that's interacting with her natal chart and what clues that gives us to the current predicament she finds herself in. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. You can also uh, chat with me directly on Twitter. I answer every single question and message at Horoscope Ace. Or please join Elisa and I for the daily astrology and tarot video show, which is proven great fun, really popular. You can grab yourself uh, your free daily horoscope every single day. It's very interactive. Please see the link beneath this video. Finally, if this kind of serious astrology is something that you're new to and you'd like to ascend above your zodiac sign and find out what makes you really tick and really quarry your great talents, then please see my affordable range of astrology reports beneath this video. There's a special offer of 30% off for a year's forecast and a character analysis, which will amaze you. Or you can check out having a one-to-one -one with my good self. Please see the testimonials below. So first of all, let's look at J.K. Rowland's natal horoscope. Her son was in the gorgeous Leo, which obviously it's in its dignity here because it rules this sign. It's also in the first 10 degrees of Leo, the first decan, so therefore it has particular resonance with the sun itself. It's also in the sixth house of hard work and industry. Now, the moon position is in the rather precise sign of Virgo. And that's really good for a writer because that would give you the kind of discipline and it kind of echoes this sixth house energy of the sun, which is very Virgoan. But she has more than just the moon in Virgo. She has Pluto, which is very much to do with transformation and our deep power. She has Uranus, the planet of innovation. She has Venus, the planet of relating. And she has Mercury, which governs the sign of Virgo, all in Virgo. So this is a person who's very skilled at having structures, working to a template, being uh, very industrious in a very precise way. But also, she can relate to others. So the stellium of influences in Virgo is in the seventh house of relating, which is very Libran-like. And the midpoint between the sun, which is about our drive, our soul energies, and the moon, which is about our receptive energies, is also in Virgo at one degree. So it's conjunct Mercury, the planet of writing. So that's quite extraordinary, isn't it? And Venus is conjunct, particularly Uranus. So innovative writing, very imaginative. In the seventh house, relating to others very skillfully. The other gorgeous thing in this chart is the angle between Mars and Jupiter, which is really 
both in air signs in uh, Gemini for Jupiter and Mars uh, for uh, for uh, Libra, which gives her a passion, but through the prism of expression. So that's great. She also has an air ascendant in the sign of Aquarius. So you can see we have a lovely grand uh, air trine between the ascendant, Mars and Jupiter. It's a bit broader on Jupiter, but you can see that's a wonderful air trine, which is all about communication. What are the challenges in this chart? Well, Saturn, the planet of restriction, is in her first house. And also, it's very close to Chiron, which in the first house is not great for our identity. So having Saturn there in the first house means that she probably really didn't have a particularly easy start in life. I'm personally not someone who's engaged uh, with the Harry Potter uh, series, um, so I don't know a great deal about her. But Saturn opposite Pluto and Pluto opposite a Chiron, this points towards struggles. And I think that this person has shown huge industry, application, perspiration, in order to generate the success she's had. It hasn't been handed to her on a plate any way at all. Now, the interesting thing is that when she was born, the sun was at eight degrees in the sign of Leo. So up until the age of 22, the sun was transiting its way in her progressions through the sign of Leo which is warm, it's um, very affectionate, but then it transited into the sign of Virgo, which is much more to do with organization, being of service, uh, planning things meticulously. But of course, what it did is it immediately conjoined with Mercury, the planet of communication. And then it conjoined a year later, her midpoint between her natal sun and her moon, and then it conjoined Venus uh, when she was about 28. And then it conjoined Uranus when she was about 33. And then it conjoined Pluto when she was about 35, 36. And then, of course, it conjoined uh, the uh, moon position about six years ago. So you can see that the way her son has moved, her progressed son has moved over the course of her life has enabled her to, to make the most of these assets that were given to her uh, in her birth chart. And this has given her tremendous drive and opportunities and she sees them and you know that's what she's done very successfully. Now in her secondary progressions now, which are based on Edinburgh where I understand she lives, and also with this chart, we're lucky enough to have a, a published time. I can't say for certain that the time I found is absolutely right, but there is a published time, uh, which isn't always the case with celebrities. So what are the challenges in a progress chart at the present time? Well, the first one that comes up to me is that the Ascendant is still in, uh, in uh, Gemini, uh, is still in an air sign in Gemini, but it is squaring up with Saturn, which leads to a much cooler, much less enthusiastic expression of ourselves. That's an interesting one. Also, Mars is pretty close to Neptune, which can create distortion, or perhaps people can take our words out of context. It just depends. The other fascinating thing is that the moon in this progress chart has come back to the point it was when she was born. So it has literally just come to the end of its second circuit in her life because it goes through a 28 year cycle and it's come back to the end of that. So really from here on in uh, she's going to be starting a new cycle and in five months time towards the end of this year her moon will actually move into Libra and it will go conjunct that progressed sun. And that's going to also see a period of time when uh, it goes across this progressed midheaven, which of course, midpoint, which of course is moving all the time as the moon moves forward, it's shuffling around slightly. But her moon from now until the end of the year is going to go across a progressed midpoint, a progressed Mercury, and then it's going to reach this sun. So maybe that's going to be 
a time when she starts to move forwards from the immediate fallout of this uh, 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 big conversation that she's been having with her fans, her co-stars and so on. So if we put this all together in a big uh, format here, the outer wheel is the moving transits in Edinburgh. The second wheel is her directions, where we turn to nativity around 55 degrees from the time she was born. The second wheel is her secondary progressions. There is one challenge in that that came out for me, apart from that Saturn uh, square with her ascendant, and that is that the Sun is squaring with her um, with her progressed Jupiter. Now, actually, Sun squared Jupiter can be very generous, but it can also see people sort of being misunderstood in some ways or trying to explain a big concept. Uh, that's interesting, isn't it? It seems to fit with the circumstances. But you can see that there's the progressed moon at 25 degrees and there's the natal moon. So it's come back to that point. There is the directed and progressed sun at 1 degrees. So what do I pick up from this chart that really stands out for me? Well, without doubt, it's the position at the moment of Saturn. The move in Saturn in Aquarius is forging a 150 degree angle to her natal Mercury, her ideas, and the way she expresses them through the seventh house, but also the midpoint between her natal sun and moon. So that's an exact 150 angle. What we get with quincunx or inconjunct is it gets very difficult for either side of the equation to express itself quite in the way that we want. So Saturn is also in her twelfth house of secrets, but also crucially hidden enemies. In fact, she also has Pluto, the planet of of transformation and sometimes ends and beginnings in the twelfth house of endings. She also has Jupiter, which is not at its best in this uh, in Capricorn in a conjunction with Pluto in her twelfth house. Also, the midheaven, which is how we connect to the world at large, is at three degrees in Aquarius. So Saturn sat right on her midheaven. That's her public persona. Saturn's the planet of restriction, limitation, bad luck. And it's also forging that 150 degree angle. It's a bit like a bus stop conversation. Two people are talking, but they're not really hearing each other. They're not really getting where each side of the argument is, or discussion is coming from. I don't know if that plays in to what she's discussing, but it's just a clue. Now, more positively for her, in terms of her expression of passions, her progressed Mars is in its home zone. It's in its dignity in the sign of Scorpio, forging a great link to the modern ruler of Scorpio, Pluto, in a sextile. But this has given her enormous passion and desire to defend the position that she feels is righteous because Mars is in the ninth house of higher values. So that's why she's really standing up for what she believes. It's also uh, in a sextile with Jupiter, which is the kind of ruling influence of this ninth house, because this is very Sagittarian energy, which uh, Jupiter governs. So that's why she's standing up for that opinion. But what are the challenges to her? It's not just that she's got Saturn on the midheaven, which can really do much to affect her uh, public standing, her status, even the affection that she's held in. Saturn's a very restrictive energy. But it's also in her directed chart, we see Mercury, the planet of communication, in the eighth house of, of deeper uh, themes of life, re reincarnation, death, um, renewal. Um, that is actually in a very strident square with Pluto and Jupiter. When Mercury squares or opposes uh, Pluto, people who have it in their natal chart are very dogmatic. I don't know if that rings out. Maybe people are being very polarised in the way that she's trying to express something through an essay, I understand, which maybe gets lost in the social media milieu, which is about grabbing quick moving headlines and people being very exercised by the emotion that they feel. Maybe she's trying to create or to discuss something at a deeper level that others aren't hearing, which takes us back to that Saturn quincunx with Mercury and her midpoint, her natal midpoint, where neither side is quite getting where the other is coming from. But I think that Mercury there is an issue. The other thing that comes up for me is the moving Uranus, which is all about rebelliousness. 
It hasn't been in Taurus, as you probably know, since about 1942. It went there in 1937. That was one of the most turbulent times in world history. And guess what? We're going through turbulent times in world history. And that move in Uranus is conjunct her directed Saturn. Her directed Saturn and Uranus is creating frustration. She may feel, because the second house is her core values, she has to speak out despite the cost to her. Also, that Uranus and that directed Saturn are both squaring her natal sun. This is really quite serious, especially the Saturn squaring her sun. I can only be really truthful with you. If you've got Saturn or Pluto in directions on the sun, it's very serious. It's probably much more serious than transits. Um, the impact that this has. So I think Uranus is making a very outspoken, it's in opposition with Pluto in her directions. Remember Saturn and Pluto were in opposition in natal charts, so they still are in the directions. But Uranus comes along and it's explosive, this mix. It's very, very outspoken. It's, it's rebelliousness to its nth degree. It's, it's like an uprising. Um, um, it's very hard to contain this energy and Saturn is very restrictive second in this chart and Placidus it's saying second fifth house but in terms of how I think about her chart in terms of the Sun being the first house it means her directed Saturn's in the tenth house of publicity fame her public standing which is where Uranus is clashing with her individual self her body her individual views in the Sun that's tough and because Saturn moves very slowly, it's been going on for about a year. But of course, um, that Sun position doesn't move, but this Saturn position will. That Uranus position goes up to 10 degrees this year. So all the time it's really attacking her Sun. And then it retreats in its retrograde. And then it's going to come back next year and be on that Sun again. So that's really difficult for her. Now the other thing that came up for me... Um, is that she has uh, her uh, progressed Jupiter on the Earth point, naught degrees Cancer, which is a very critical point, and that means that it's actually square her natal and sorry her directed and progressed Sun. So there's a potential for exaggeration there, but there is going to be a solar eclipse on the 21st of this month of June, as you know. It is going to be forging a quincunx 150 degree angle with Saturn and that's therefore that move in Saturn which impacts on that solar eclipse is on Jupiter which is about her philosophies, her beliefs that she passionately believes in, uh, her view of the situation. But Saturn in the 12th house I think what that 12th house energy is doing, it's boshing her basically on Mercury in the 8th house, so she's sharing very deep held feelings, but it's also boshing her on the 5th house, which is about her warmth, her desire to express herself, her creativity. But this 12th house energy is all about the potential for secret enemies or enemies being teased out into the open. So I understand that some of the coast or the stars of her films are actually some of the people being most outspoken in the position that she's taken. Now, how this must feel to her at an emotional level, I don't know, because I don't know the relationship she's got with those people, but I would imagine she's had quite a lot of exposure to them over the years. How that feels to her, I would imagine, would be quite challenging. So, this 12th house energy is stirring up deep within her, very, very profound energies that she feels she needs to express. So, that's a quick tour de force around her situation. I'm just checking my notes to see um, if there is anything else that I haven't remembered to include. And Saturn appearance. No, nope, I think I've pretty well covered everything. So I think for her, there's going to be a new beginning for her. She'll probably kind of reset her position quite considerably as this year draws to a close. And Jupiter and Saturn, Saturn returns to Aquarius on the 17th of December. 
Jupiter goes there on the 20th, they come together on the 21st, that's then going to forge a sextile with this progressed and directed sun, and I think that's going to be the reset point for her as she brings this close of this year to a close. But she's obviously uh, felt very strongly about this situation. You too may feel very strongly about how you feel if you've invested in her work and you have a particular relationship with her um, or the characters she's developed. It may be wounding or you may be inspired by her. It's not my role in terms of astro journalism to take sides. I'm just telling you what's going on in the astrology and the astrology is challenging there is just one thing actually Mars moved into uh, Pisces on the 13th of May you can see now it's up to 22 degrees in Pisces it's conjunct Neptune still two degrees but basically a Mars today is completely opposite her moon it's only three degrees apart but since it moved into uh, into Pisces, it's been opposing her natal midpoint, her Mercury, her Venus, her Uranus, her Pluto, and now her Moon. No wonder, because it's all in the first house, Mars in the first house, especially in Pisces, it's very subterranean. It wants to, to express things that have been bottled up, but I think having Neptune there, like she's got in her progress chart, she's got Neptune conjunct Mars up here, it's wider there, it's five degrees, it's much closer here. M Mars conjunct Neptune is the mischief maker bar none of distortion, but Mars in the 12th solar house and has been squaring with the sun since the 24th of May, has been bringing a lot of deep held feelings amongst a lot of different people and bringing a lot of information or different views or frustrations or injustices into the open in a very powerful way. And Mars is about impulse. So her impulse has been to speak out and she's spoken. And now obviously there is the shakeout from that because we live in a society where everyone has a right to an opinion. It's not top down communication and information like it used to be years ago. Anyone can say how they feel and for a public figure like her, I would imagine that from what the little I've read about it, that the backlash, especially from those stars, must be something that might take some dealing with. So thank you so much for joining me. Probably gone on slightly longer than 15 minutes, but I hope it's not been too long. I hope I've been as direct as possible. And this gives you an idea of how I grapple with people's situations. And you can see that she's starting a new moon journey, which will take her through the next 28 uh, years. And initially, uh, through the end of this year, it's still in Virgo, but then it goes into uh, Libra for the following two and a half years. So I think she's going to be looking to be much more conciliatory uh, from the end of this year onwards. But at the moment, she really has shown a lot of strength of conviction, whether you agree with her or not. And as I say, I don't really know the ins and outs of it personally. But thank you so much for joining me. And remember, please, to sub. Check out all the links below. Stay safe, take care, and good luck.